Jesus, who gathers us in for this time of evening prayer, welcome to Westminster and Affirming Ministry in the United Church of Canada. So happy to have you with us uh, for this time of prayer this evening. If this is your first visit with us, uh, thank you for stopping by. I hope you'll join us again for other broadcasts. Um, and I, I hope you enjoy this time of prayer with us. Uh, as we gather tonight for prayer, we acknowledge the land and territory upon which we worship. We acknowledge and pray for the inhabitants, ancestors, and presence of Indigenous peoples in Canada, recognizing that as we worship and as we live, we do so on the ancestral territory of the Fort William First Nation, part of the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. If you're tuning in from uh, another part of this country, you are um, welcome to name your ancestral uh, land and the territory upon which you live, either in the comments or simply to yourself or to those in the room with you. By way of announcement, um, Facebook Live broadcasts for the month of August while I'm on vacation will be Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, for that for our usual time of prayer and reflection and that time will be followed as always by the worship over at the Trinity Live website that's shared by the uh, United Churches in the city. Um, so Sunday morning 10 a.m. Uh, you can tune in here and uh, and if you're not able on Sunday morning if you're away camping or doing the things of summer um, you can always uh, find the, the uh, videos later on the Facebook page or on the Westminster United Church Thunder Bay YouTube channel. Um, all the videos are uploaded there uh, once they're uh, processed on Facebook. As always, our candle is lit to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and his light shines in all of us. I thought tonight for our reading I would share Psalm 111 and this is the version found in the Iona Worship Book from 2017. My whole heart praises God in the midst of the worshiping people. All of God's works are great, a delight to those who study them. They are full of honor and majesty, justice, which lasts forever. God cares for those who show reverence and is faithful in keeping promises. All that God does is just, as are God's rules for living. They are meant to endure through the ages and be kept with faith and fairness. God has redeemed the people bound to their maker by covenant. Wisdom increases when God is honored. Trust God. Find this to be true. Let God be praised forever. May God bless to our understanding this reading from sacred scripture. This is the witness of God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalmist declares, all God's works are great. They are full of honor and majesty and justice, which lasts forever. This is great wisdom in this psalm. And it's a reminder that all of creation is framed within the love and goodness of God, our creator. And it's a reminder that creation itself is inherently good. And when it is distorted, it is not because of God, it's because of us. God does not pollute air and water, nor does God spew fossil fuels or clear-cut forests. We do. The psalmist also says wisdom increases when God is honored. What that says to me is that when we look to God's created world and see where it is broken, and where it has been harmed. We grow in wisdom when we recognize it as God's own creation, and therefore something we need to honor, therefore something we need to care for as a sacred blessing of God. When we do that, 
We grow in wisdom and we honor both God and creation. And really it's only then that we can begin to work with God to co-create the justice which lasts forever. And that justice stretches into every part of our lives, our care for the planet, our care for one another, our care for ourselves in body, mind, and spirit. It comes into play in our advocacy for those whose voices struggle to be heard and our unfailing insistence upon anti-racism within our church and within our society. All of these and more require our work every day to bring about God's justice, that justice which lasts forever. And all of these actions and more are, are those which we take in response to God's goodness and response to God's faithfulness to us. In some way today, you did the work of our faith, the work of love, justice, and peace in the name of Jesus. It may have been a small act of kindness that you barely registered as an act of kindness. It's just you being you. Perhaps you tended to part of God's creation Perhaps you called someone and said hello. Perhaps you held a door open. Perhaps you stepped away six feet so someone would feel safe in your presence. Might not have seemed much to you at the time, but it was. Those small acts of faith, those small acts of kindness, all bring us closer to that vision of justice which lasts forever. So in whatever way you did the work of your faith today, thank you. Now, if you haven't had a chance yet, do listen to the video I've got posted here just before we uh, went live. It's a wonderful version of a hymn, a tune you'll recognize but the, uh, the lyrics were written by Jan Struther in 1926, and it's called Lord of All Hope Hopefulness. And here's the final verse, appropriate, I think, for an evening prayer time. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day. Let's pray. God of love, source of life, we come together now in prayer. From near and far, we join our spirits to lift up the joys and concerns of our hearts. In praise and thanksgiving, we are grateful for this glorious season of summer and for the beauty and bounty of your wondrous creation. We marvel at your grace as we listen to bird song and taste the sweetness of summer berries. For all the ways your presence and power are revealed in, through, and around us, God, we are thankful. Today we are especially grateful for the small acts of kindness that brighten our world. A smile we may not see behind a face mask, but recognize in someone's eyes. A card in the mail or a call from a friend. Holy One, we recognize that in these months of isolation and restriction, we've been caring for each other in small ways, but really, they haven't been small ways at all. Together, all of our efforts have created something significant, something powerful, 
something spirit-filled and faithful. We have been church for one another with every act of kindness and care. God, guide our way and remind us that even when the sun shines and the birds sing, we have work to do, the work of justice, especially the work of anti-racism, because none of it rests just because we're tired or because we're at a loss of what to do next. Help us to keep anti-racism in the forefront of our work for justice and peace as a church and as a society. Divine Mystery, we pray now for all whom we know to be in a time of struggle and for all whose suffering is known only to you. We pray for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, for all who wrestle with addiction or mental illness, for all who are lonely or grieving the loss of a loved one. And God, we pray for all who grieve the loss of the things we're all missing in this time, gathering in crowds, singing in choirs, and not needing to be so vigilant all the time. These are real losses and we need your divine strength to work through it. We need your faith to guide our way in these times. And so we ask that when our own faith is fragile, we might lean on the faith of our friends to bear us up until the inspiration of the spirit reignites our own. Help us to bear one another up through the coming days. Grant us, God, the comfort of small things and the wonder of great things. So, me, so we may always be agents of your love and your justice and your peace. These and all the prayers of our hearts we lift up in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our blessing tonight is taken from a book called To Bless the Space Between Us by John O'Donohue, and this is called For Belonging. May you listen to your longing to be free. May the frames of your belonging be generous enough for your dreams. May you arise each day with a voice of blessing whispering in your heart. May you find a harmony between your soul and your life. May the sanctuary of your soul never become haunted. May you know the eternal longing that lives at the heart of time. May there be a kindness in your gaze when you look within. May you never place walls between the light and yourself. May you allow the wild beauty of the invisible world to gather you, mind you, and embrace you in belonging. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us this night and every night. Amen. See you in September, friends. Until then, be safe, be well, be kind.